Hello everyone, so welcome to another Python tutorial series. And in this video, I'm going to talk about creating a time tunnel animation using Pearson Engine. So in a lot of sci-fi movies, there are time tunnels that can send people back to the past or to the future. And these time tunnels usually look similar with a sequence of flashing rings flying towards you. And once a person comes in, he or she will disappear and be sent to the past or in the future. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can make a time tunnel using one image using the Yersna engine, and I hope you like it. So let's add in our uh, Yersna module. So we create from Yersna, import star, and let's create a window. So we could write app is equal to Yersna, and we can set the window's color. So window.color is going to be equal to color.black, and here we're just setting the window's color to black. And now we can write app.run. So if I run this, all we did was set the windows colors black, and we have this nice pop-up window. Great. So let's create an empty list with 40 elements. And each element will hold an entity, and in this animation, it's going to be a ring image. So right below here, we'll have a variable called m, it's going to be equal to 40. And we're going to have a list called circles, and this is going to be equal to none, so they're going to be empty right now, multiplied by m. So we're going to have 40 of these. And so what we could do first is circles 0, so the first index of this list. And this is going to be equal to an entity, and the model is going to be equal to a cube. And here the texture is going to be equal to a, a ring image. So image slash ring dot png, and this is an image that I have on my computer. And I'm going to set the scale equal to 3. So now for the other 39 um, entities, what we can use is basically just a for loop. So for i in range 1 to m, or for i in range 1 to m, circles i is going to be equal to entity, and the model is going to be equal to a cube. And the texture is also going to be equal to image slash ring dot png. And the scale is going to be equal to 3. And now I can just set circles dot z, well circles i dot z, is going to be equal to the previous circles i, so circles i minus 1, dot z plus 10. So now we use a for loop to create 39 more cube entities and assign them to the other elements in the list. And note that each two neighboring uh, rings are going to be 10 uh, units apart in the x direction with the first ring closest to us and the last ring uh, furthest away furthest away from us. So now if I run this, we should see 40 static rings in the window. There you go. So now let's add in our origin. And so the idea of the animation is to have the rings coming towards us. And so we will set the origin as uh, circles m minus um, 1 dot z, which is the x coordinate of the last entity. So we'll have the origin, so origin equal to circles m minus 1 dot z. And now, using this origin, let's create an update function. So to find update, and remember that this update function is called once per frame. And here we're just going to move the rings. So uh, we will see that the rings are going to be moving towards us. But after a while, you'll notice that there are going to be no rings left. So what we could write is for entity in circles, uh, we're going to set entity entity dot z equal to entity.z minus time by dt multiplied by 20. And this will just move the circles towards us. So now if I run this, oops, let's see what happened. Circles, circles. Yep, make sure you spell that correctly. And there you go. But after a while, you'll notice that, well, eventually, there are going to be no rings left. 
and this is going to be a problem. So I'm just going to have this animation keep playing until we see that there are no rings left. And there you go. We see that there are no rings on the screen. And that's because all the rings have traveled behind us. And to fix this, what we could do is some boundary checking. So we have to check the boundary in the z-direction and reset the x-coordinate once the ring resets the boundary. So let's create a global variable. So global origin. And now that we've created that, in this for loop, we can check if entity dot z is less than negative 15, I will set entity.z equal to the origin. So when the z coordinate of each ring is behind us, what I'm going to do is move that ring to the very back, so to the furthest away from us. And now if I save and run this, you'll see that, well, it eventually is never ending. And to make the tunnel look a little bit more interesting, we can add a camera to the scene and look at the tunnel from different angles. So let's add that. Let's close this. And now, instead of just declaring a global origin, I can also declare an x and a speed variable. And down here, uh, down here, I'll do x is equal to 0, speed is equal to 0.2. And here, x is the coordinate of the camera, and speed is the moving speed of the camera in the x direction. So now in this update function, what I could do is, outside of this for loop, increase x. So x is equal to the previous x value, plus time by dt, multiplied by the speed. And now I'll check if the absolute value, or if the absolute value of x is greater than 1, then I will reverse the speed. So speed is equal to the previous speed value times negative 1. And I'll set camera.position equal to x, uh, 0 on the y coordinate, and negative 20 on the uh, z coordinate. And so if I save this, and if I run this, we can see that this adds the camera to the scene. And the camera will slowly move between the negative 1 and 1 in the x direction to give a different view of the tunnel from different angles. And now this gives us a more interesting perspective. Alright, so this is the end of this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.